Welcome to M to M coverage. We are halfway through the NFL season. Week eight just concluded with a great game. Tampa Bay Buccaneers defeat the New York Giants 25 to 23 on a questionable call. We are here to react to the first eight weeks of the season. Kevin Kim, Geoff A. As always, I'm your host, Suraj Zaveri. And let's get right into it. We're going to start in the NFC. We are going to go through some favorites, surprises, sleepers, and just an overall reaction, what we see and what we predict for the upcoming weeks. So let's go into our favorites in the NFC. Kevin, you go first. I think this is an obvious pick. I think that the majority of people would agree that the Seattle Seahawks are the favorite for the NFC very easily. My only concern for them is their defense, though I did see some improvement in their defense against the San Francisco 49ers, but I think that was more because of the ineptitude of the 49ers offense. Um, But until I can see more of this defense, I think it's a wide open race. As of now, Russell Wilson's playing at MVP level, and he's going to carry them and put them into every single game that they play for the rest of the year. Yep, without a question, Russell Wilson is the front runner in the MVP race. Well said. Jeff A, any differences? Well, I completely agree with Kevin. The Seahawks are definitely one of the favorites. But my other favorite would be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, as much as I hate to say it. It's just that there's so much talent on that roster. Like, they don't have any weaknesses whatsoever. They're one of the best defenses in the league. They have a pretty good quarterback. They have, a, they have great wide receivers. They have great running backs. They have a good coach. I don't see any weaknesses with that team. So, you know, as much as I hate to say it, they're going to be one of the better teams. They're going to be competitive in the playoffs. And I'm going to combine both of your takes. So right now, Tampa Bay Buccaneers are the favorite. After Sunday night, 10.30 p.m. Central Time, the Seattle Seahawks will become the favorite because the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will have been obliterated by our New Orleans Saints. And this is a fluid league. We change with evidence. That's how I'm going to say it. Okay, let's move on. Surprises. Biggest surprise. A team that we we made predictions at the beginning of the season, right? Surprises. So a team that we didn't expect to be where they are right now in terms of record, in terms of outlook. Um, Kevin, go first again. Yeah, I think it's the Chicago Bears. I mean, I don't really think anyone really expected them to be um, this good. I mean, I don't think they're really good, but their defense is elite, and it puts them in every single game they play this year. They beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are a consensus top three team in the NFL, apparently, according to many experts. And also, they almost beat the New Orleans Saints, who are also a top NFC contender. And they've proven that even with Nick Foles and Mitch Trubisky and that, you know, the incompetence that goes around with that quarterback room and the ineptitude of their entire offense, you know, if they're able to stay competitive, then I think that, uh, you know, they've proven to be, you know, a team that's not not, not to be messed around with or to be um, underestimated. I think the Chicago Bears, you know, with a little bit better offensive play calling and offensive play, uh, just play in general, I think they can be a contender. But as of now, they're definitely surprised in terms of their record, but I don't think they're a true threat. Yeah, and they've definitely kept games close with their ugly offense, yet um, timely defense, if you want to put it like that. Geoff A. My biggest surprise would be the Cardinals. You know, I expected them to be a decent team. They would probably be like 9-7, and seven, but, you know, they're surpassed expectations. You know, Kingsbury has some questionable coaching decisions, but for the most part, they have been a great team. They have lost two games so far. I believe those were two games they should have won. But they beat the Seattle Seahawks, who is one of the best teams in the league. And I think Kyle Murray is playing at a great level. He's playing at an MVP level, but I think Russell is is going to get it. And if Kyle Murray can keep doing this, if the Cardinals can keep doing this, I think they have a great shot at the playoffs. And I wouldn't say they will go far, but they're, they're going to be competitive. Yeah, and we saw them defeat the Seattle Seahawks, who were the only undefeated team in the NFC at that point. So Cardinals is definitely a very valid take. I'm going to go to the other team in the NFC West as a surprise, the Los Angeles Rams, because, you know, we were talking about this division when we entered the season and we talked about, you know, Kyler Murray is going to take a sophomore step up and Russell Wilson is always going to be there and the 49ers are going to be there. So we kind of just left the Rams to the dust. And though they've only beaten the NFC East, their record speaks um, to a little bit of volume that they that they do have Sean McVay as their coach and they can stay competitive in games and always they're not going to get completely outcoached even though that loss against the Dolphins was pretty bad to 
this past weekend. Without further ado, let's get into the disappointments in the NFC. I don't want to spend too much airtime talking about the NFC East because that division does not deserve our attention right now. It's pitiful. But if we had to pick a disappointment in the NFC, who would you pick, Kevin? You know, I want to talk about the Vikings because that's my clear pick as my disappointment, but I'm going to pick a better uh, record team right now. I'm going to pick the New Orleans Saints as my disappointment because coming into the season, they were talked about having a vaunted defense. They made moves to, uh, you know, upgrade that offense, getting a wide receiver number two in Emmanuel Sanders. And this team was primed to be a heavy NFC contender, a top team in this NFL. But as of right now, we have not seen that from the New Orleans Saints. And uh, I mean, granted, they've had many injuries. Michael Thomas hasn't played since week one. But still, if you're an elite team, you should be able to handily beat bad teams. And the way that they played the Lions, the Chargers, the Panthers, the Bears, and all very, very close games. And of course, they beat the Bucs, but that was week one. Who knows what, how the Bucs will have improved since week one. Week one's always a big question, and that was the first time that Bucks team was playing with the currently constructed roster they have. You know, obviously, I think the New Orleans Saints will improve. I think they'll go back into that top NFC contender conversation. But as of right now, as of after week eight, the Saints have underwhelmed and underachieved. That, that's a very fair point. You know, we're looking at a small sample size, but there are two losses. Um, one of them was to the Raiders, which nobody expected at that point in the season. And then the Packers lost, you know, they kept it close, but there's been defensive problems that have been consistent we've seen in the New Orleans Saints. So I do like that point. Jeff A., who is your uh, disappointment? Yeah, I'm going to pick the obvious one. It's got to be the Vikings. You know, coming into the season, I thought they were the clear favorites to win the division over the Green Bay Packers. You know, they had a great defense. Uh, I thought Kirk Cousins would step up. They had a great offense. Davin Cook was going to be a great player. Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, they had a wide, great wide receiver core. And all of a sudden, this year, they've just been trash. You know, as, especially when Davin Cook doesn't play. When Davin Cook plays, you know, we have seen him carry that team. We've seen him beat the Green Bay Packers, but... You know, I expected them to be a decent team, a team that could maybe win 10 games, but I don't think they're going to win more than six, seven games this season. Yeah, and now that it looks like the team has gotten it all together, it seems to be a little too late. Um, you know, Dalvin, you mentioned the thing about Dalvin Cook, and it's just like I saw the Packers winning this division from the beginning of the season. But I expected the Vikings to keep it really close. And, you know, Kirk Cousins has just been disappointing. But they've actually lost a couple close games that they probably shouldn't have lost, like the one against the Seahawks. So Vikings are a great disappointment. And I'm going to go with the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> I know this is not a very uh, hot take because the Cowboys are an obvious disappointment. But even with Dak, they were like one and four. So there's no defense there's so much hype all season, all off season long about the Cowboys. And this just proves again, like there's issues from the ownership down issues with the coaching issues with the defense. Zeke is fumbling. They're just not a good franchise right now. And they haven't been for a while. And I like it when Stephen A goes on national television and trashes the Cowboys because the franchise kind of deserves that they need to reset again I think and Dak Dak was really carrying that team and I just I hated to see Dak's injury but that's the state of the Cowboys right now lastly let's get to the most filled with hot takes portion of our segment um the sleepers sleepers in the NFC I want to see what you guys have for this one because we do we probably have a lot of different teams that could easily pull in front make it to like an NFC championship. We could see teams like the Titans from last year go on a run. Um, Kevin Kim, who you got? Yeah, uh, specifically the Washington football team, but as a whole, the NFC East. My take is that the NFC East, as terrible as they have been, I feel like whoever makes it to the playoff game will get an upset win in the wild card, wild card round because we've seen in the past where terrible teams make the playoffs and then suddenly there's this new you know sense of refreshment like everyone just start off starts off at zero and zero again you know no no records don't matter anymore there's no home field debate it doesn't matter anymore everyone's just a fresh new team clean slate and you you win or you lose if you lose you're out 
right? And the Washington football team in particular, I think they've been playing very well in, you know, in terms of, you know, the NFC East, but they've also been very competitive with Ron Rivera. Ron Rivera has put in a new culture in Washington where, um, you know, previously it was dysfunctional. I think, I feel, I feel like there's more discipline now in Washington and, you know, even with Kyle Allen or even Alex Smith, if Alex Smith gets to play again, um, like, starter role again I think that they can be competent enough to take over the NFC East the Eagles and the uh, Washington football team both have very very favorable remaining uh, remain, remainder of the schedule for the rest of the year I think the football team only has the Seahawks and the Steelers to deal with that would probably be you know a loss but everything else is a very toss-up game for them and the East is wide wide open they're only like a half half a game behind right now and I can see the Washington football team you know taking the NFC East and hosting a, a playoff game Yeah, and they probably have the strongest front four in that division with Chase Young and the amount of sacks they've been getting. I think think that's a good take because they're playing motivated for Ron Rivera as well. Jeff A., sleeper. My team, they have no chance of winning this division, but I feel like they are a sleeper team in the wild card, and that's the Carolina Panthers. You know, when CMC went out, I thought they had no chance of, you know, being competitive. And they really surprised me. Mike Davis has been a good player. And this team has won a couple of games. They've stayed competitive. And Robbie Anderson has been one of the best wide receivers in the league, honestly. And, you know, he's really stepped up. And I think with CMC back, maybe next week or the week after, this Panthers team is going to be even better. Joe Brady is an offensive genius. And, you know, I feel like they might upset someone in the wild card. And we know how much you love Teddy Bridgewater based on you breaking the news when he was signing with the New Orleans Saints as a backup. Yeah, I love Teddy Bridgewater, and I think he can do big things for the Panthers. Okay, and I'll round it off with the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm going to go to another team in the NFC East. They looked ugly against the Cowboys, but they found a way to win. And the only positive thing I've seen from the Eagles that gives me a little bit of hope that they're a sleeper is the fact that Carson Wentz can play up to his competition. He scored 29 points. He was slinging it to Travis Fulgham against the Pittsburgh Steelers defense um, a couple weeks ago. And he's really created some great plays um, other than his mistakes, right? He makes a lot of mistakes, but if he can play timely football, he was out against the Seahawks in the wild card last year. If he can play timely football and get on some sort of run, Doug Peterson is a Super Bowl winning head coach. So I just think the Eagles, if they can get it all together, the, the, the division is theirs to take, right? They're going to get a home playoff game. And Kevin's take was that the winner of the NFC East could win a playoff game. So that's why I have specifically the Eagles. And now I'll add to that. I think the Eagles have a great chance of being good, especially when they get healthier. They're one of the most injury ravaged team. So once Carson Wentz gets his weapon back and part of his line back, I feel like the quarterback play will inherently become better. And also on the Panthers take, you know, the NFL might be considering a 16 team playoff. So if the Panthers get in the playoffs. I can definitely see them doing damage.